Hey guys, welcome back to this Flutter game development series where we are creating a 2D top-down space shooter called Space Escape using the Flame Engine. In the last video, we added a lot of code to support multiple spaceships in this game. We first added the spaceship class which holds all the metadata of a spaceship. Then we also added the static map and an enum using which we can map each spaceship type to its corresponding spaceship object. Next, we added this player data class which stores all the persistent data of current user like current selected spaceship, own spaceships and the amount of money left. And finally, we added code in our game class to get current player data and use it to initialize the player component in game world. So in this video, I am going to add a new page from where players can actually select their spaceship. And for this new page, I will need a carousel slider. So I will head over to pub.dev page of flutter carousel slider. From here, I'll copy the dependency and add it to my pub spec. Okay, so now let's start by adding a new file under screens for this new page. I'll name this one as select underscore spaceship dot dart. As usual, this file will contain a stateless widget called select spaceship. Now to keep the look of the game consistent, I'll just copy the whole scaffold from main menu dot dart and paste it in the build method of select spaceship. And let's include game underscore play dot dart for this gameplay widget. Like in main menu dot dart, in the navigation code of play button, I'll change this gameplay widget to select spaceship widget. This means player will first have to select a spaceship from select spaceship screen and then they can go to the actual gameplay. In the select spaceship class, let's change the last button into a back button using which players can go back to main menu. First, I'll add a push replacement call in the on press of this button and navigate to main menu. Next, instead of this options text, I'll add an icon widget with back arrow icon. And while we are at it, let's also rename text of this first button to start and the title text of the screen to select. Now let's quickly build and run this to see how it looks. Ok, and as you can see, we are now getting this select screen after pressing play button. And on pressing back, we are navigated back to main menu. Also, if I press start, the game starts normally. So now let's start modifying the select spaceship page to display all the spaceships. First, I'll add a carousel slider widget using the builder constructor in between the select title and start button. For the item count, I'll specify spaceship.spaceships.length. Next, the slide builder will be a function which takes current index as input and returns a column widget. I'm using column widget here because I want to display 3 to 4 properties of spaceship one below the other. But if I save this, you can see that the start and back buttons disappear. This is because the height of our slider widget is not constrained. So to fix this, I'll wrap this inside a sized box with height property set to half the height of current device's screen. Now in the column, I'll start adding properties of this spaceship. First one will be an image of the spaceship. For this, I'll use image.asset constructor. Now to get the path to image asset of this current spaceship, we'll first have to get a reference to that spaceship. For this, I'll write spaceship.spaceships.entry.elementatindex.value. Now we can pass in spaceship.asset path as input to this image widget. If I save this, we'll see the spaceship in the app. Now before I start swiping through this list of spaceships, let me fix a small bug in spaceship underscore details dot dart. Here the asset path of the last spaceship is wrong because this edge should be in uppercase. So I'll change that and do a hot reload of the app. And now we can swipe through all the available spaceships. Ok, so back in select spaceship dot dart, I'll quickly add some text widget below the image to display name, speed, level and cost of the spaceship. And just at the very end, I'll add an elevated button which displays a text and has an empty on pressed function for now. I'll also set the main axis alignment of this column to main axis alignment dot center. Next, we need to add some code which will actually allow buying a spaceship and selecting it as the current spaceship. For this, we need a bunch of methods in player data class. So let's go to player underscore data dot dart. Here at the very end, I'll first add a method called is owned. This method will take a spaceship type as input and return true if player already owns a spaceship of this type. 
and this can be done very easily by just checking if current list of own spaceship contains the given spaceship type. Next, I'll add a method called can buy. This will also take a spaceship type as input and will return true if player has enough money to buy a spaceship of this type. And inside this method, we can simply check if this dot money is greater than or equal to cost of given spaceship type. Next method that I'll add is is equipped. And job of this method will be to check if given spaceship type is the current spaceship type of player. This completes all the query methods that we need for now. Next, let's add some methods that will actually modify player data. First one will be buy. This method will take a spaceship type as input and will buy that spaceship. Inside this method, first I'll make sure that player can buy this spaceship and does not already own it. If that is the case, I'll reduce this dot money by cost of the spaceship. And we are getting an error here because this dot money is marked as final and we are trying to change its value. As we know that this field will keep on changing throughout the game, we can remove the final keyword. Same is the case for spaceship type. So I'll remove final keyword from there too. And now in the buy method, after reducing the money, I'll add the given spaceship type in the own spaceships list. Finally, I'll call notify listeners as state of the player data object has changed. The last method that we need in this class is equip method. This method just takes given spaceship type as input and sets it as the current spaceship type. In this method too, I'll call notify listeners at the end. And that is it. Now let's go back to select spaceship.dart and start using these methods. First, I'll wrap the select button inside a consumer widget which listens to player data. Inside the builder function of this consumer, before returning the elevated button, I'll get values of is equipped, is owned and can buy from player data for current spaceship type. Now for the on pressed of elevated button, I'll return null if current spaceship type is already equipped. This will save users from rebuying or reselecting already equipped spaceship. I'll use the same check in this text widget to display equipped instead of select when is equipped is true. For the case when is equipped is false, I'll again check if is owned is true or not. If it is true, it means user owns this spaceship but it is not set as their current spaceship. So in this case, I'll display select. And finally, if both is equipped and is owned are false, I'll display buy. And now if I save this, you can see that the button says buy for all the spaceship that are not owned by player. Next, in the on pressed callback of else part of is equipped, I'll first check if is owned is true. If that is true, we just have to ask player data to equip current spaceship. But if is owned is false, it means user wants to buy this spaceship. Now it is quite possible that some players will press buy button even though they don't have enough money. And for such case, we'll first check if can buy is true. If it is true, we can simply call player data dot buy passing in the current spaceship type. And if can buy is false, we'll have to display an alert message indicating that player needs more money to buy the current spaceship. This can be easily done by using show dialog function. This function needs current context and a builder which returns a widget to display. From this builder function, I'll return an alert dialog. The title property of this alert dialog will display insufficient balance and it will be center aligned. And the content property will display exactly how much more money is needed. This can be obtained by getting difference of spaceship.cost and player data.money. So if I save this and try to buy a spaceship, we'll get this alert. And to make it stand out more, I'll change the background color property to colors.red. And now it looks much better. Next, to test if this system is actually working as expected, I'll go to default data map of player data and change initial money to 500. Now let's hot restart the app. So here, if I try to buy a spaceship having cost more than 500, we'll get an alert. But if I try to buy a valid spaceship, the buy button now changes to select, which means the purchase was successful. And if I click on select, the text changes to equipped and the button gets disabled. And finally, when I press start, we get the selected spaceship in game. So this is working great. 
but right now there is no way for players to tell how much money they have. So let's add that feature real quick. I think it will be better if we display the name of current spaceship and amount of money left just below the select title. So in this column, just below the title visit, I'll add a consumer of player data. From the builder function of this consumer, I'll return a row visit. And as children of this row, I'll add two text visits. First one will display name of current spaceship from player data. And the second one will display player data dot money. Let's also change the main axis alignment so that these text widgets are spaced evenly. And as these widgets are inside a consumer, if I buy a new spaceship or equip any own spaceship, they'll update correctly. So this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you were able to follow along and learn something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.